you want to come over here? <laughs> sure. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. I got you. Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Well, those are not going to be apart, you know? Let me go ahead and get signed in here we'll so that we can it. say hi. So we, put the, the, we put this one down first. We have lots of new things because going on in the classroom like today, and there is some without strategy going on. <laughs> Does mine go on top of it? Yeah. So the next question is going to be over here. Here for you. At the end. And then. Ah, here I am. Yeah. You see me? Thank you. You're so welcome. I'm still going to say, I'm here. I learned. Good morning, Barbara. Good morning, Brian. Sparks over a mask. Nice to see you guys watching this morning. Well, I wore one with first. Valerie, are you here? It looks like you're here too. Yay. Thank you. David, nice to see you. All right, so today we're doing something way, way new. So I'm gonna go ahead and give you the little spiel this morning. So some of you know for me to continue being a yoga teacher, I take my certification pretty seriously. And when you go to renew, they want you to do CEUs. And so this year I chose to take an aerial teacher training class. Which is awesome. I'm loving it. I'm having fun. We won't be teaching it at the church. We don't have the infrastructure for it. But for me to graduate from there, I'm required to teach an aerial class. And I have to teach one of the classes that their series. And I have to do it Monday. <laughs> I know I volunteered to go first, you know. So what I did is I took that aerial class and I converted it to a mat class. Just because you guys are always wanting something different, I get lots of um, ideas on Facebook. You guys send me messages, which I really appreciate you sending me your ideas so that I can keep the practice fresh for you guys at home. Um, so what we're gonna need today is you're gonna need a chair. You could totally use your couch if you wanted to. Um, I put these little swimming noodles on the chairs last night so that it wouldn't hurt our ankles, but obviously, you don't have the time to do that or you don't necessarily have to do this. This is lower than hip high. Um, you can choose that. You can do the seat of the chair. Anything that you can just kind of prop your leg up in because the concept here would be that your foot would be in the hammock if you were in aerial class. Now I did not create this class. My friend Sarah Anthony at Elevate Yoga in Orlando came up with this class. Elevate Yoga is a really awesome space. You should try it out. Um, all I did was take her practice and convert it to a mat practice so that I would have a chance to move through these things before I teach my very first aerial class on Monday. So thank you guys for going on this journey with me. As you know, Facebook Live on Wednesdays now that we're not in quarantine, but I have a room full of students that I need to check in with. So I'm going to check in with them while you grab your goodies. You need a mat? You might need two if you want your mat to be a little long. You might feel crowded. This mat's really long, so that's um, not a good representation. So you might need two mats so that all four legs can stay on the floor unless you're using the couch at home, which probably won't slide. Um, if your knees are sensitive, you'll need a blanket. And I'm gonna check in with my peeps and we'll get started. Hey, darling. Hey. Well, thank you. Oh, <laughs> you can bring it to the point. Here's the point. Body so, pretty good? Yes, thank you. Good. I almost didn't. Turn the toes and come up. You're just going to hang the head. Okay. 
because the weight of the head is going to help elongate through that cervical spine, making space in there, okay. and then it'll make you have a little more comfort. Okay. Oh, we got a little one to know. Oh, Felicia's probably here. Mm -hmm. Hello, darling. How's your body? I'm awesome. How are you? Good morning, ladies. I am amazing. Thank you for asking me. It's nice to be asked. Um, I'm a live, alert, awake, enthusiastic. How about that? That's perfect. Okay. Good morning. Hi, ladies. How are you? Your clothes are better yet. Oh. that you put about Halloween because I'm a freak about Halloween and granted putting it out at 4th of July is probably a little early but I'm so looking forward to something fun so that was awesome thanks for that post earlier hi everybody okay everybody's checking in new is good will you say that my hips are singing they are singing okay um Let's see if we can get started here. So I can watch your comments. So how we start today is we're gonna start in Shavasana. And I know you guys are like, ooh, happy day, happy day. Well, it's a false sense of happy. <laughs> so let me get this mess up here. And so what we're gonna do is we're going to lay our legs underneath the chair. Let me give you that concept before you lay down. So we're going to lay here to work on just grounding and getting centered. But when we're done, we're going to need to be able to put the back of that heel on the chair. So I think that maybe you should start here and see, okay, I need to move. This is where I'll need to be. Keeping in mind that if you were in an aerial class, that swing would move back and forth so you could always find it. Here, that chair's not gonna move. So once you know that your ankle will touch the back of the chair, you're gonna just take it down and we're gonna rest a little bit. Maybe a little rock from side to side. Maybe you can let those hands come to the belly. I'm gonna release the feet. We're going to notice every place that the back body touches the floor. We want to feel grounded. So on our way here, we, you know, we get up, we show up for our lives, we get dressed, we get in traffic, we've eaten, maybe visited with our family and friends, and we kind of get scattered. So we're going to take these first couple of moments just to ground and find our practice. We're going to do a three-part breath, a Durga breathing. We're going to inhale belly, take a tiny pause. Inhale rib cage, pause. Inhale up into the ribs, pause. Now we exhale same order, rib or collarbones, rib cage, belly. Now we know anatomically you can't breathe into your belly. But that is just that focus so that we can breathe deeply into the lungs. So let's see if we can try that again. So inhale, belly. Inhale, chest and rib cage. Inhale all the way up into collarbones and to base of neck. Exhale out in that order. Collarbones. Rib cage, solar plexus. Belly. Try that a couple of times on your own because it's this breath that brings together all of our bodies, our physical body, our energetic body, 
our mental body and our emotional body. And we know that sometimes all of those are not on the same page. This breath helps put us on that same page so that we can have the best practice we can. Maybe as we lay here, we dedicate our practice to someone or set an intention for the practice. They move those fingers and toes a little bit. And we're going to bend one knee, put that foot down, bend the other knee, put that foot down. Make sure your lower back is flat. Pull both knees into the chest, a little rock from the side to side. Now, we're going to start by hanging onto right knee, send that left leg back down to the mat, straighten the right leg, put it on the back of the chair. Move accordingly. So if you need to slide up, then slide up. Once you feel stable, that noodle in the chair is where you'd like it, we're gonna pull that knee in. And again, you guys at home that are practicing, maybe it's the couch. Maybe it's a stool or an ottoman. Anything that's going to give you a little elevation. And you may think oh, that's where the swing would be. So we just want a little movement here. We're going to let that left leg get straight. We're going to grab the back of the thigh. Now once we grab the back of the thigh, we're going to feel those hamstrings start to say good morning. And then we're going to slowly see if maybe we can walk those hands up to the calf. Pulling that leg closer and closer to the face. Maybe you can reach up and grab the foot. Maybe you're still at the thigh, and that's okay. We just want to find that breath. And one. Good breathing. I hear you guys, too. Three. Four. Five, we're gonna gently release that foot. So now the foot is straight up. We're gonna put the hands down if you want to. You may not want to. You can press down, put weight in that right ankle and see if you can lift. You, your back legs of your chair will come off just a tiny bit. We're just lifting those booties up just a tiny, tiny bit. Three, four, five. Slowly lower them down. I want you nice and safe. Nice. So chair legs are on the floor before you move. We're going to start to rotate that right ankle out and let that left leg drop over to the left. Arms can come out into a T. Maybe take your right hand and grab that left leg and try to pull it some. Breathe. This gets kind of tense and when it does, our breath just stops. We hold the breath instead of the posture. Try to soften the face. Keeping left shoulder on the floor for sure. You can press down through right leg and kind of rotate some if you'd like. You can press down and lift hip for more of a stretch if you'd like. Now keep in mind, chair legs will come off, but only just a squoosh. Another reason why we made sure there was a mat underneath the chair so it wouldn't slide. We're going to gently rotate that leg back up and pull that knee in to release. Maybe a little rock, finding that breath. And then we're gonna let that left leg come up onto the chair. And then we're gonna bring right leg into chest. Maybe a little rock. Filling in lower back, let right leg come up. Maybe we can grab that thigh and slowly start walking up. Nice full breath, two, three, four, five. Now just for funsies, we're gonna straighten that leg. 
We're gonna press down on that left ankle. Hands are on the floor to maybe help a little bit. See if we can lift that leg up. One, two, three, four, five. We're gonna slowly lower those hips back down, making sure you're safe. We're gonna let that right leg start to travel to the left. Arms can be out into a T. You can let that left ankle roll a little bit as it just hangs out. You can totally flip the chairs around and use the lower side if you need to. Maybe you can press in and rotate some more. Two, three, four, five. We're going to bring those legs back up. Now we're going to put that foot down on the back of the chair. Both feet are on the back of the chair. Arms can be beside you. And we're going to see if we can lift those hips up. Now keep in mind, your chair here in the classroom will probably come off the floor just the tiniest of bits. We're just trying to lift the tukas up off the floor. Where's your breath? Three, four, five. Slowly we're going to lower back down. Roll those knees gently into the chest. Nice little rock from side to side. We're gonna put the bottoms of the feet flat on the floor and rock those legs. Now, of course, you know I've taken my friend's practice and I've converted it to a mat practice, but of course I couldn't leave it alone, right? I had to put stuff in there, so. You're welcome. <laughs> we're gonna do wall angels, but here on the floor. So we're gonna put those elbows out, arms up. We're gonna open through the chest. We're gonna allow those elbows to travel up till the fingertips touch. And back down, that's one. We're gonna let those fingertips come up until they touch. And back down, that's two. Up and touch. And down, that's three. Up and touch. And down, that's four. Up and touch. And down, that's five. Up and touch. And down, that's six. Up and touch. And down, that's seven. Up and touch. Down, that's eight. Try to really stay flat here. Up and touch. Down, that's nine. One more time. Up and touch. Down, that's ten. Oh my goodness. Really getting the shoulders and the body working. We're going to pull the knees in. We're going to roll to whichever side's comfortable for you. Take a pause. We're trying to make that transition to hands and knees. But we're taking our time, checking in with the body and the lower back as we slowly So as we come up here, I don't know if I am gone or not, but we will see. All right, so from here, we are in table. And in that table, we're gonna practice a cat and calf. So inhaling up and down. And up and down one more time spine comes up and down flat back now from that flat back we're going to soften the feet and slowly lengthen back and stretch here nice child's pose find your breathing Now, from here, we're going to get a little shoulder stretch in. We come back up to table. We're going to let that right arm come up. We're going to thread it through. Right shoulder comes down. Maybe here, we can send the booty back, extend left arm. Nice rotation in shoulders. This class is so hip-centered um, because it's just something that you're not used to. I'm adding in some shoulders and some wrists here so that you just get a little diversity in the practice. We're going to come back up to table. Let's see if we can try that other side. Left hand comes up. 
We're going to bend at the elbow, send it through. Maybe you can shift the booty back. So it's a child's pose plus thread the needle. So it's a yummy plus yummy. <laughs> really nice posture here. Three, four, five. We're going to come back to table. And then from that table, we're just going to turn those toes, stretch into a down dog for a second. Bend and stretch. Feel the work in the ankles, in the calves, lengthen through spine, filling in lower back. We're gonna put those knees down. We're gonna work on the wrists a little bit. So making sure that those wrists are underneath your shoulders. Slide the shoulders to the right. Find your breath. You're gonna slide those shoulders in the other direction. And back to the center. We're gonna take that right palm, spin it around so that the fingertips are facing the knee. You're going to take that left hand, spin it around so those fingers are facing the knees. Nice big stretch here, feeling that work through the front of the forearm. One, two, three, four, five. We're going to gently release one forward, then the other. Now this one's a little harder, and so putting weight in them is going to be difficult. So you may want to shift your weight back towards your feet. Your fingertips are going back towards your knees again, but it's the back of your hand instead of the palm. So when we first do this, we tend to just bring those elbows out to the side, right? We want to try to see if we can extend those arms straight, but try to turn the eyes of the elbows forward. As soon as you try to turn your elbows forward, your wrists are going to go holy mackerel. Holy, really? holy moly, right. So we're going to be as time. put my shoulders up too. Yes. And that's exactly it. We're trying to release it all the way down. Do what you can. Again, the more you shift your weight towards your booty, the less you're going to be in those wrists. And then we're going to release one and then the other. We're going to sit back on those feet the best you can. If you have to sit taller on your knees, that's all right. And we're going to just do this. Nice little figure eights and change the direction. Good job. Maybe shake it. That's some good shaking, ladies. <laughs> and we're going to put those hands down. So from here, we're going to bring that right shoulder and that right knee close together. So we can look behind us. When we look behind us, we're going to see if we can take that right foot and place it on the chair. Now, I have a little bend in my knee. You may want to just change that so that it's straighter. Or if you decide that is way too high, you can flip the chair around. But I really like to challenge you and let you see if you could do it a couple of times with it tall. We tend to move to comfort pretty easily. I want you to be out of your normal comfort zone. We're going to let that leg come out. And back. So we're working through those abductors on the outside of the leg. We're going to come out. Don't bend your elbows. You'll want to but bring that leg back. Now here's the hard one. We're going to bring it out, but we're going to hold it. So we're going to bring it out. Don't bend your elbows. One, two, three, four, five. We're going to let that leg come back and hook it on the chair. Nice job. Now we're going to rotate. We're rotating, rotating to the right. We already do this often, but now there's a chair here and we feel like, I don't know what I'm doing, right? <laughs> so you, all you did was rotate to the right. You allowed that left knee to spin. That right leg is still on the chair. So the left leg is oh, perpendicular oh. to the front. Okay, that's gonna give you a little more comfort. So maybe bring your legs or your hands to the right even more and let your ankle spin towards me perpendicular to the front, the left shin. Yeah, you have more comfort, good job. So maybe you just hang out here. Maybe you can come down onto those elbows and maybe you guys at home are going, uh, no. Maybe you here in the classroom are like, uh, no, but you're just too nice to say it. So maybe you just feel this work. Remember to breathe. That's our connection to staying present. It's our connection to all of those other bodies, the mental ones, the physical ones, energetic ones. This is our half frog. Three, 
four, five. So we're slowly going to come back up. Now, we're going to practice a side stretch or a supported side plank sometimes, that's what it's called. We're going to put that left hand in the beginning, right up here at the front of the mat. We want to try to get that shoulder under, that wrist under the shoulder, and let that right arm reach. We're going to reach above the head. We're going to open through the rib cage. We're going to smile and stack. One, two, three, four, five. We're going to let the right hand come up and then slowly, just the right hand, down to the floor. We're going to practice side plank. If you feel like side plank is too hard, you're going to repeat the posture you just did. To get into side plank, you're going to let the right hand help and that right leg pressing down on the chair and hop left leg out. Coming into that supported side plank or full side plank. Yes, good job, Christy. Good job. Beautiful, Corinne. Good. One, two, three. Are we smiling? There's muscles there too, everybody. Four, five. We're going to let that top hand come down, spinning slightly, putting left knee down. Make sure that we reorient to the front of the mat. <sighs> Good work. We're going to turn those left toes under and come into a three-legged dog. Now, when you come into that three-legged dog, your back leg will shift because your body moved backwards. So I'm allowing my shin to lay on top of the chair. And this will take a couple of times of moving through this practice. So like if you are doing it at home and you feel a little discombobulated and you maybe play it again on Saturday, it will seem less awkward because you've been through it one time. So I'm gonna bend my left knee some and let my ankle slide to the chair. And I'm gonna use this as an opportunity to hop my left foot forward some. So I'm in a lunge. So we want to get a twist in this lunge, and we do this in our normal practice. We're going to leave the right hand down and let the left hand come up. It feels so much different because the back leg is on a chair. We typically do these same postures in the same order. Two, three, four, five. We're going to let that left hand come down. See if maybe you can toe heel that left foot over to the left side of the mat. And you can now begin to allow that left knee to sink and come out. We're working on lizard. Maybe you have the ability to come down to your elbows and maybe not. And that's all right. Do what you can. One, two, three, four. Five. And slowly, we're going to bring those arms back up. And you can always flip your chair around. You can always choose to put your foot on the floor if you would like. There's all kinds of ways to change this up to work for you. Now we're going to toe heel that left foot in. Once we bring it in, we're just going to stand on that foot, let the right leg come up. Remember, we can use the chair or not. We can flip the chair around. It's just a change of the practice. And just think, next week, be different, a whole other practice. Three, four, five. We're gonna put that right foot down on the back of the chair. We're gonna work on a pigeon posture here. And if you would prefer to do pigeon on the floor, that is okay. We're gonna let that left knee come down. Maybe, depending on your flexibility, the foot goes straight behind. Maybe you're able to angle this. Maybe you can come down onto the elbows. Most important to me is that you're comfortable. Beautiful. Everybody in here is different, and I love that. Nice, full breathing. The breath is more important than any posture you'll do in the practice. Two. Three. Four, five. Now, from here, we're gonna work on a headstand prep. Lacing those fingers together, elbows are forearm distance apart. We're gonna turn the toes 
on that left foot. Put the head down and lift up. Now, if you have neck issues, come into a dolphin. Just let your head hang and let this be um, a supported dolphin. So one leg would be up, one leg is down. But maybe you put your head down. Maybe if you have the ability or at home, be safe. Maybe you can put that second leg up on the chair. Maybe you skip it. What's wonderful about a practice is that we all practice together, but it's still yet your personal practice. You can change it to fit the body that you brought today. We're gonna gently step down out of that. We're all gonna meet in child's pose and rest. Maybe we're gonna shift from side to side. Find your breath, feel connected to the floor. Hmm. Now from here, we're gonna to rotate to table. From table, turn the toes, down dog. Bend and stretch, checking in with your body. You're definitely gonna feel one leg more than the other. We're going to slowly walk those hands to the feet. And your butt may hit the chair, that's okay. Maybe you step forward to get away from it. And we're going to inhale all the way up. Hands come down. And it feels good to stand up. It feels good for that change, right? We are doing something that we don't typically do, so everybody in here is really quiet. Right ear, right shoulder. On Wednesdays, we don't play music because I put this on YouTube and they don't like you to have music on your videos on YouTube. We're gonna let the left ear come down to the left shoulder, stretch it out. Try to bring awareness back into your feet. Feel connected through the earth. And then bring the head back up. Now in our aerial class, we do a hip uh, rib cage hang here, which is a really nice upper thoracic back bend. We're gonna try to recreate that. We're gonna take our hands, we're gonna put the thumbs right here at the base of the shoulder blades, and we're gonna push in and up. And we're just gonna turn the heart and let it shine up. Maybe a soft bend in the knee so that you don't sway too much, and you just try to help lift your shoulder blades up towards the sky. Broadening through the chest, make sure you smile and breathe. One. Two, three, four, five. Contract belly, let chin come forward to chest as hands come down. Let the back of your neck rest for a moment. Mm. Now from here we're gonna turn around and we're gonna face the chair. Now, Make sure that all four legs are on the mat for me. Just as long as they're all there so they don't slide. That's all we're looking for. All right, nicely done. We're going to slowly grab the back here and start sending the booty back. If you have to step back to make that work. So it's a chair. You're making a chair while holding on to the chair. It's like a scene from Inception. I get it. All right, so we're going to come into a posture called figure four. We've done this before. We're going to rely on the back of the chair to lift up, bring right leg up. We're going to put right foot on left knee and then see if we can send those hips back again. Feel that work in the hip. One, two, three, Four, five, we're gonna slowly start to straighten left leg. We're still hanging onto the chair, but we're gonna try to pull that right knee in towards chest. Now we're gonna lean forward, send that right leg back. Pull that right knee in. Lean forward, send that right leg back and pull it back in. 
One last time. We're going to push that leg out, but this time we're going to hold it. Now we're in that warrior three. This is a modified. We're hanging onto the chair, but I want you to bend that right knee. Maybe you just stay here. Maybe you can still grab with your left hand to the chair, but right hand can travel back and grab right foot, turning it into a dancer. Maybe you don't. Maybe you still hang onto the chair, and that is okay. Three, four, five. We release the foot, grab your chair, slowly place that foot down, roll all the way up. Let those hands come all the way up, nice big stretch. Let right hand grab left wrist, switch over to the right, nice big stretch. Back to the center, left hand grabs right wrist and rotate over to the side. And contract, coming back to the center, arms come down. We're going to face the front of the mat, come to the front of the mat, we're going to inhale all the way up. Exhale, forward folding. Fingertips flat back, forward fold. We're going to step back into down dog. Nice down dog posture here, really pulling in the navel. Feel that back body stretch. So if we were in our aerial class, this would count for our hip hang. We're just going to kind of wiggle our booty here a little bit. We're going to maybe let that right leg come up into three-legged dog. Maybe we can bend that knee, open up the hip. We're going to let that right foot come down and left leg come up. Maybe we bend the knee, open through the hip. And back down. Bending and stretching. We're going to put those knees down and we're going to come into child pose, really resting out. Let's just hang out here on the floor. You guys take a break. Let me check in with my students here. How are you guys doing over here? You doing pretty good? From here, we're going to do the other side. Yay, other side. I think you guys here on the internet are going to like that better. I didn't realize my phone was on the internet and my computer, which is pulling a lot. Um, so I switched it to just data. So you guys will be able to stream a little better, I think. So we're going to work on the other side. We're going to put that left foot up. Adjust accordingly, finding your comfort. All right, we're going to let that leg swing out to the left. Don't bend your elbow, you'll want to. And back. You're going to have one hip that's like, hallelujah. It's, <laughs> it's so much tighter than the other one, and that would be this one for me. Rotate it out. And back. This is the third time we're going to hold that. We're going to rotate it out. One, two, three, four. Five. We're going to bring that leg back, sit it down. We're going to rotate to the left. All of you guys at home, sorry about my butt. So <laughs> we're in that half frog. So again, we want this shin to be perpendicular to the mat itself, parallel to the front. Maybe you're able to come down onto the elbows to really lengthen through this inside and outside of left leg. Where is your breath work here? One, two, three, four, five. Now, as we come up, we're going to work on side stretch or supported side plank. Right hand moves to the front of mat. Left hand comes up. Where is your breath? Feel connected through that right hand. Maybe grab with those fingertips. Breathing now. One. Two, three, four, five. We're going to let that left hand come down, 
it can come to the mat to help you. You can choose to redo that side stretch or come into a side plank. You can do side plank with a straight arm or with a forearm. You're going to press down into right hand and into left ankle and give yourself a little hop. Coming into side plank, maybe. And one, two, three, four, five. We're gonna let that left hand come down, rotate, and see if maybe we can just put that knee down just that littlest of bit. So we've brought ourselves back to the front of the mat. We're gonna turn right toes under. Maybe you're not using the chair anymore. You're like, nope. This is the side that's uncomfortable. I'm using the mat or the seat of the chair I had. It's okay. You can use small children in the coffee table too. <laughs> it's, it's fine. We have small children in the, in the classroom today. We'll use that. We're going to come into three-legged dog. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Now, from there, I'm going to bend my left knee, making sure that my ankle is on the back of the chair or whatever you're using at home. A little hop for it for a lunge. Now, keep in mind, my lunge right here, it's not overly dramatic. It's not way up near the front of the mat. It's just a lunge. I have my right foot under me so that it can support my weight. I'm trying to keep my right knee over my ankle as much as I can without traveling over the toes. Left hand stays on the floor as the right hand comes up. Where's your gaze? It matters. You're looking up towards the sky. Beautiful. And this can be translated down onto the floor if you choose. Nicely done. One, two, three, four, five. Good job. We're going to put that hand down. We're going to toe heel, right foot over to the side of the mat. Now, when that right foot makes it to the side of the mat, you can begin to allow right leg to come out to the side. Full breathing here. Feel that work. Three. We are doing lizard. So your right foot is forward on the mat into a little more of a lunge. Maybe the elbows come down, maybe they don't. You choose. Most important is we're breathing. The rest just comes. Movement is good. We're gonna straighten those arms. We're gonna toe heel that foot back in. So we're all together. And we're gonna see if maybe we can put some weight in that right foot. Let that left leg come up. Oh, nice big stretch. Standing split. We're able to release that contact from the chair. Sending that leg up. And maybe your leg only lifts a foot. That's okay. It's all good. We sit that foot back down. And we're going to work on a pigeon posture. And that can, again, translate all the way down to the mat. You don't have to use the chair. If you're going to do the pigeon with the chair or whatever you're using at home, you're going to bring that right knee down. Maybe that foot can rotate out some depending on your hip and see if maybe you can make it down to the elbows. Nice work. Find that breath. Holy smokes. How are you holding up, Christy? I'm good. You're breathing. Two days in a row. Breathing. Practicing. Good job. Three. Four. Five. Now, if you want to stay here, whether you're on the chair or on the mat, do that. Maybe you need to take a child's pose and rest. This isn't easy. We're going to try a headstand prep again. And you can totally just practice a dolphin to build those shoulders until the day that you're ready. We can turn those right toes under, lace the fingers, press down to a dolphin. You can choose to put the head on the floor or not. Just balancing here in that dolphin is enough. Feel that work. One, two, three, four, five. From there, we're gonna gently take that foot off the chair and down to child's pose. We'll all rest. 
Nicely done, everyone. Nice full breathing. Maybe a little rock from side to side here. Now from here, you come to table, from table to down dog, lengthen through the spine. Last time we walked backwards with the hands, so this time we'll walk forward with the feet. So we bend the knees, looking forward, step to the front of the mat, fingertips flat back, really lengthen it out. And forward fold. Inhale all the way up. Hands come down. And walk it out. Good job. We're going to turn towards our chair. We need to do our figure four chair for the other side. So the hands are on the back of the chair. We're going to walk back just a bit. And we're going to sink those hips. We bend the knees, send the hips back. Bend the knees, send the hips back. Try to pull in that navel. Work and try to change it to the posterior tilt from an anterior tilt. You're like, what? So what does that mean? That means you're trying to pull your navel towards your spine, but try to scoop your tailbone under, like Pee Wee Herman tequila, right? <laughs> <laughs> so from here, we begin to bring left knee up, put left foot on a right knee, and then sit back into it, feeling that hip. One. Two, heavily rely on your chair so that you can get deep in the posture. Three. Four, five, we're going to slowly straighten that right leg. We're going to bring that left knee to the chest. Once you get that left knee to the chest, we're going to send it back behind us. And then pull it back into the knee, uh, to the chest. Send it back behind us. And pull it back in. The third time, we're going to leave it back there. So we're going to send it back. One, two, three, four, five. Bend that left knee. Leave your right hand on the chair. See if your left hand can reach back, grab that foot. One, two, three, four. Five, release that foot down, release that hand. Use both legs to stand up straight. Walk it out. Feel temperature and texture. Arms come up. Right hand grabs left wrist, stretch to the right. Back to the center, left hand grabs right wrist and stretch to the left. And slowly coming back up. Let those hands come down and release. So you're going to turn, face me. Let those shoulders come up and down. And up and down. Right ear, right shoulder. Left ear, left shoulder. Back to the center. Now the end of this practice, if you're doing an aerial practice, you would do something called a hip hang, where the silk is wrapped around your hips and you're hanging upside down to elongate the spine. But it helps elongate through the neck, which is important, and through upper thoracic. And we can do that in the chair. So I'm gonna turn the chair sideways. I'm gonna give you some options because you may see me do this and be like, I'm just not comfortable to do that today. Or you may think that you are getting into it and it not feel good. Right? So we're going to do a back bend on the chair. I like doing back bends on the chair because you have the back to help you come up. My pelvis and my booty is on the side of the chair. I'm not sitting in the chair because I only want this much thoracic back bend. Lower lumbar already bends. We don't have to encourage it to bend. It already does it. Laying on the chair, you notice I hit shoulder blades. If you need to hold your head just to be gentle to make sure Great. Once you're down, don't 
go like this because you see what happens, I shrugged, right? Bend those elbows and let the gravity pull. See if that works for you. When you get ready to come up, you can let right arm grab the back of the chair. You can grab your head with that left hand if you need help to come up and sit up. If you decide, I don't like that choice. I don't want to do those things, and that's okay. You'll sit in the chair normal. Is there an alternative? Because I'm not comfortable with my head back like that. It's, we're going to just do twists. That's what I'm showing you now. Okay. Oh, okay. So if you don't want to do that, you're going to sit in the chair like this. You're going to slowly reach back, come into a twist. You're going to hold it for a little bit, and then you're going to come here and twist here. Those are your options. Are you marking take up? <laughs> so for the, you guys that, excuse me, at home, Practice what makes you feel best. Maybe you were using a couch so that you can't lean over it to do back bend. You can do that standing one we did earlier with the thumbs on the back, or you can do the seated twist. You take care of you at home while I work on this lovely folks that are here. Nicely done. your practice you're going to come back to the center take your time especially for those of you who've been laying across the chair you want to be nice to your neck good job now from there we're just going to move that chair if you had moved it for your back bend and we're going to recline down and we're going to slowly come to the floor. Oof. Maybe we can extend one leg and then the other, making it to the floor. Now, as we all make it to the floor, we want to pull those knees in, releasing any type of stress that we might have unduly and unintentionally created in the lower back. A little rock here will help release that tension. We're gonna let the arms come out to the side, drop the knees to the left. And back to the center, we're gonna drop those knees over to the right. Back to the center. <coughs> We're going to put those feet flat on the floor. Windshield wiper those legs from side to side. Bringing those hands down beside the body, we press through the feet and lift up. Nice bridge posture here. We feel connected to the floor. We notice it even more because we've had our foot in something else that didn't make us feel necessarily grounded. So here with both feet on the floor, we can really press through there. Lifting the hips up, we feel more anchored, more supported. Gently roll down. Once we make it to the bottom of that, we're going to extend one leg and then the other, relaxing to the floor. We release the feet and the ankles. We continue with that body scan as we release the shin and calf. The knees and thighs.
the glutes and pelvic belly. We release lower back and navel. Mid back and solar plexus. Shoulder blades and heart. Collar bones and neck. We soften jaw and face. Now that was the physical body. This gives you that opportunity to again check in mental body, emotional body, energetic body, and return back to your breath if you've lost it. Inhaling belly, rib cage, chest. Releasing the chest, rib cage, belly. Let's try again. Belly, rib cage, chest, chest, rib cage, belly. You do that breathing on your own as you reflect on that body. Noticing the differences that you have on the two sides or the balance that you have. We're not in a rush, but we are going to move, but so slightly, just fingers and toes, maybe wrist circles. Hmm. Maybe we change the breath and start to shift and stir. Maybe you can reach those hands above the head. Yawn a little bit. Ooh, yes. We're gonna bring those feet flat, putting the knees up, maybe windshield wipers here, and we can bring those knees into the chest, a little rock if you like, and then roll to your favorite side, taking a pause. And then slowly we come up to a comfortable seated position. Once we make it to the seated position, we allow the head to turn to the right. We allow the head to turn to the left. Back to the center. Hands come to the heart. We remind ourselves of all the amazing things we have in our life to be thankful for. We send out love and kindness and compassion to those who need it. I'm going to end the practice with an om if you're comfortable, and if not, just enjoy mine. Inhaling. Oh. Bowing forward, namaste. namaste. Peace be with you. With you. Go safely. And thank you for coming. Thank you. Yay, yoga. I'm so glad you guys joined me. That was rough. It was different, but I liked that it was different. Um, I, again, I think we had camera issues, but I forgot to set it on just data and not Wi-Fi, so I think it might have restarted. But for everybody who's still out there and still watching at home, big hugs from this class to your home personal class, and I'll see you next Wednesday. Well, yay. Thank you. So creative.